Now, hello and welcome to this Alabama adventure. Today we go on a little trip. We're going to go roaming some of the back roads and trails of Alabama in search of some lost towns and communities. This one's not particularly lost. I just hadn't been there in about 40 years. It had been a long time since I'd been to this little town or community that we're headed to in just a few minutes. The town is in Tallapoosa County. It's called Dudleyville. And no, it's not the Dudleyville that's associated with ECW wrestling. And I'll talk about that a little bit when we get down there. This was a town that uh, I used to go through once in a while. Uh, matter of fact, 40-something years ago now, I dated a uh, lady from down that way back before I got married. All that kind of stuff. Back when I was out roaming around and we were going to uh, places like Blue Creek and places like that. Oh, that was the days. But anyway, I thought about her when I got down to Dudleyville a while ago. Wondered uh, what type of life she's had. But anyway... What we want to do is to get in the car and we want to head off down to Dudleyville. It was a perfect day for traveling down here today in Alabama. Skies were blue. There was a little light breeze. It did not get over 75 degrees all day. As a matter of fact, about a week ago, it was about 100 down here. And uh, it was all you could do to breathe. But today was a perfect day for traveling. So let's go to Dudleyville. And as I always like to say. And now, from the tail end of the Appalachian Mountain Chain in the heart of the South, this is Alabama Adventures. Well, hello boys and girls and welcome to this Alabama adventure. If you used to watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood like I used to do several years ago, he'd be talking about what a beautiful day in the neighborhood and it is one more beautiful day down here in Alabama today so I guess we need to sing. It's a heck of a day in the neighborhood. Heck of a day in the neighborhood today. Anyway, what I want to tell you about today is a uh, little lost town or community that used to be a pretty booming little place. Uh, we got a couple little towns like that we're going to go through. Let me kind of tell you where we're at. Right now, we're at the intersection of County Road 79 and Germany's Ferry Road. I wanted to get that little shot right there. And now let me uh, just sort of give you, that's Germany's Ferry Road. That's where we're going to be headed down in just a minute. And of course, this is uh, County Road, Tallapoosa. Tallapoosa County is where we're at. I didn't say that, but I'm going to say it now. But anyway, this is uh, County Road 79 right here that goes on down to Horseshoe Bend. And this right here is uh, Germany's Ferry Road also. It's uh, cooled off down here in the south. The wind's blowing. I hope that wind noise is not picking up on the uh, mic here on the uh, camera. But anyway, it, uh, was about, it was about 100 degrees this time last week. And it's about 73 or 4 degrees today I noticed on my porch when I went out. So it seems like fall has come. But anyway, this road right here is Germany's Ferry Road also. And about 3 or 4 miles up that road is the intersection of Alabama Highway 22. So that'll kind of give you an idea of where you're at. But so if you're coming uh, west on 22, as you go through Zena, you'll run up on Germany's Ferry Road and you'll want to make a uh, left turn on it and come right down through here and you'll come right through this intersection. And I almost didn't get it as it came up from Germany's Ferry Road right there was a log truck. And this blue log truck, I see this thing no matter where you go in the south, you're going to see this blue log truck. He hauls uh, logs everywhere. What I want to tell you right here is this little church. I'm not sure the name of it. It's on the sign down there, but I'm not going to walk down there today. This little church will be here at the intersection of 79 and Germany's Ferry Road if you come down this way. And there's a very old cemetery out there. And I have a video I want to do on that a little bit later on this fall. Because there's actually supposed to be, I hadn't seen it, I was told in this cemetery that there is a grave out there that is actually marked that this man was killed by Creek Indians. Uh, that's what's supposed to be marked on his tombstone out there. So anyway, it was a uh, very long time ago. This is a very old church, uh, very old cemetery out there. But I do want to do that. The reason I'm not doing it today is because it's just now turning cool weather and the rattlesnakes and the other snakes are going to be crawling, hunting them a hole for the winter. And... Uh, I don't particularly want to get snake bit down here today. Let's go on down the road. I have several things I want to show you and several things I want to tell you about. All right, we're coming right on down the road. We're still on Germany's Ferry Road, and I know you're saying, whoops, he done changed hats on me again today. Well, I'm going to tell you a little something about this hat in a little bit and whenever we have a little bit more time. Right now, what I want to do is show you this cemetery. I'm not going to get up there in the cemetery. We might do that a little bit later on in this winter, maybe. But let me show you this cemetery real quick. Uh, this Cemetery right here is along the road, uh, is along uh, Germany's Ferry Road, and this is the Germany Cemetery. 
I'm not sure the story on it or the, or the story on Germany's Ferry. I believe it was a family of uh, most likely immigrants, I guess, from Germany many years ago moved to this uh, area, and uh, I guess that's where Germany's Ferry got its name, and I guess they just took their last name as uh, Germany. Probably that was where they were from. A little bit later on, somebody looks like here recently has cut the grass, and uh, that's what we'll do a little bit later on. We'll come back down here and check out this old cemetery. But right now, we're off on our adventure. All right, we're still coming on down the road. We're headed to where we're going. Anyway, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I found something a little bit different that I want to show you. I wanted to show you this bridge. And let me uh, get off the camera, and I'll show you this bridge right here. This bridge right here crosses the Tallapoosa River just north of Horseshoe Bend. And what I also wanted to show you about this bridge is the name of it. And right here is the sign. People in this area will be a whole lot more familiar than most people will. This is the Carl Moran Bridge that crosses the Tallapoosa River. Now that's what I want to tell you real quick is why this bridge is called the Carl Moran Bridge. Let's walk on out here on it just a little ways. Let me just give you a little shot of uh, up uh, North River. That's what that looks like. That's the Tallapoosa River that goes through Horseshoe Bend. It hadn't hardly made it to Horseshoe Bend. And right over here you can see the rooftop of a house that is uh, located right alongside the river. And let me swing across the road here and give you a little shot on down river. Very, uh, very pretty place here. Anyway, uh, there's some rocks out there. And let me aim the camera right back up this way. As you can see, there is access to, uh, to the river here from uh, Germany's Ferry Road. Let me uh, turn back around real quick. And I'll tell you why this bridge is called the Carl Moran Bridge. The story I always heard was many, many years ago, there was a man that lived in Daviston named Carl Moran, and I didn't know Carl Moran. Anyway, he ran a little uh, store up there uh, for years and years. I guess he ran it till he, till he died. But what happened, he was coming down this road one day or one night, I'm not exactly sure when it was, and he had a wreck here on the bridge, or right at the bridge. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know the exact whole story on it. I just know what I was told over the years. And anyway, in that wreck, Carl Moran lost his leg. And that's why the bridge was named the Carl Moran Bridge because he lost one of his legs when he was in this accident here. Anyway, just a little something that I wanted to pass along, some uh, information that may be forgotten one of these days. But anyway, we'll get back in the car. I believe our next stop is a little town called Butston. And if I'm bouncing the camera, it's because I'm giving out. I done got tired walking across this bridge. We're headed to Butston, Alabama right now. All right, I have finally got across the bridge. That's a long bridge. Now let me turn the camera around and I'll show you. That was a long little walk we had. Right here, when I came back across the bridge to get in the car, and I got another car coming. So let me pause it so I can tell you what I'm talking about. Anyway, when I got across the bridge here to the other side and I started to get back in the car, I found something else. I want to show you this real quick. And that was a long walk across that bridge right there. But anyway, let me show you this. This uh, area right here, I'm not sure about the canoeing or kayaking here in Alabama. But anyway, if you're into it, then you probably already know what this is. The Harold Banks Canoe Trail, I guess, comes right down the Tallapoosa River right under that bridge right out there. Just a little something else I want to show you. All right, we're moving right along on this journey today. Let me tell you where we're at. <clears throat> we're at a crossroads. We're in Butston, Alabama. And let me give you a shot of this sign. We're right here at the intersection of uh, Butston Road and Germany's Ferry Road. And this is Butston. This is Germany's Ferry Road. This right here used to be one of the largest junkyards that you have ever seen. But uh, somebody made the uh, owner clean it up and do away with all the cars. There were some cars in there that really should have been kept and uh, restored. A lot of them were in very good condition. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a little while. But uh, the old junkyard's gone. But back when I was younger, and I could work on cars and uh, uh, enjoy doing that type of stuff, I used to come down here and buy parts, uh, stuff like that from this man. His name was John Baker. He's one of the nicest guys you've ever met. He had a dog that was similar to Chico. Uh, his dog's also name was Chico, and that's actually who we named Chico after was John Baker's dog down here. But one of the smartest dogs I've ever seen. He, he was a mixed breed. It had some Chihuahua in it. I'm not sure what all it was, but it was a very smart dog. And that's where my dog Chico got his name from. 
and uh, I was very proud that I knew John Baker and his wife and uh, all the people that worked for him years ago. This right here is Speedy's uh, Catfish. It's uh, right now out of business. The last I heard it was out of business, but I'm just going to show you what a Butston, Alabama looks like. This was a, uh, a catfish restaurant or whatever you want to call it for many, many years. And people came from several, several counties around to enjoy the uh, catfish that was uh, served here at uh, Speedy's. Speedy's, I believe, now is out of business. If you would be interested in opening that, uh, just get in contact with me and I'll get in contact with Speedy. It was a... Uh, I have been down here on Friday and Saturday night, and this place, all out behind it, would be full of cars where they had customers. All up through here would be uh, packed full. Of course, the parking lot right there in front. You couldn't get a parking place in the front. I have even seen p cars parked uh, alongside the road coming in to, for a uh, pickup and that type of stuff. I do want to get back when I get back to the uh, studio and tell you a little bit more about uh, uh, John Baker. His wife also worked with him. She was a very good auto mechanic. She was she was one of the very few women that I know that could uh, tear down a, a engine, a car, anything, and put it back together. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that whenever we uh, get back to the studio. But now, let's continue on our Alabama adventure. Okay, now let me break in on the uh, video here for just a minute to talk a little bit about John Baker's garage and junkyard down there. But it was back in the 1970s when I got started going there, right after I got out of school and I worked on my own car and that type of stuff. There was a lot of old cars and uh, trucks in this particular junkyard, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that I feel like really should have been restored. If uh, nothing else, you could have got a lot of parts off of those for people that were uh, restoring that particular model, whatever he had down there. And he certainly had a lot of stuff. He had cars that went on back into the 40s and 30s. I can remember some of those old cars that I call Bonnie and Clyde or John Dillinger cars. I remember seeing some of those in there that were in pretty good shape. They would have been pretty easy to put back together. There was a, uh, a early 50s model Cadillac I remember in there that looked very similar to the one that Hank Williams uh, died in. But uh, I'm sure, I know he didn't die in one of those down there. I didn't mean that. But it looked very similar to one of those cars. I remember it. Just as you went into the junkyard, uh, he had a... Uh, old Milwaukee beer truck sitting there. Uh, I always looked at it. Every time I walked by, I remember uh, thinking, I, I'd like to have that just to drive around in. And uh, he also, not only did he have cars and trucks, he had heavy equipment. He had bulldozers and other type tractors and stuff. And a lot of those old 70 model trucks, both Ford and Chevrolet, that I remember down there, I remember some of the uh, high price now, Dodge cars, the uh, uh, Super Bs and that type of stuff from back in the 70s. But he had several old Ford trucks that I would have certainly liked to have to put back together. But all of that had to be crushed. Uh, I heard that uh, John died several years ago. And whenever he died, somebody came in and uh, gave his wife just a unbelievable short amount of time to uh, clean that junkyard up. Or they was going to start finding her per car on that particular junkyard. And uh, that's just somebody just showing their authority. Uh, a lot of people like to do that whenever you're down. They like to kick you, and uh, a lot of people do that, and that's what I feel like happened to her with whoever this particular pers person was that her, had her to crush all these cars as quickly as she possibly could. I hope she got a very good price out of them anyway for scrap metal whenever she did, but there were some of those cars in there that would have brought a high dollar had they uh, been gotten out of the junkyard and auctioned off somewhere. I just wanted to tell you that about the junkyard down there that there was a lot of valuable vehicles that were crushed down there. Let's get on to the video. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about Butston and, of course, John Baker's garage in just a moment. But now, where did Butston get its name from? Well, a friend of mine that's a uh, mechanic that lives in that area said that uh, Butston derived its name a few years ago from some very curvaceous young ladies that lived in that area, if you know what I mean. And then uh, he laughed and said, nah, he was just joking that Butston actually got its name after a family of people whose last name were Butt. And uh, if you remember in the movie uh, Chiefs, there was a family of uh, Butts in that particular movie. Uh, one of them was a, a police chief later on. But anyway, it's not that uncommon of a name, uh, Butts. But anyway, let's get back to our little trip. All right, so well, we're back in the car and we're going to head on out to uh, Dudleyville. Well, right now we're leaving uh, Butston. And way I want, one way I want to tell you to go to Dudleyville is you can uh, 
turn right here at Speedy's and go down Butston Road, and Butston Road is supposed to intersect into Dudleyville Road. We'll find out in just a minute if my memory is correct or if I'm getting old and feeble-minded. So here we go off on our adventure to Dudleyville. All right, and we have arrived in Dudleyville. And I want to tell you something about Dudleyville. Dudleyville has certainly changed since the last time I was here. Let me show you where we are. We're at the uh, intersection of Dudley Road and Lafette Road. And now right back here is the old Dudleyville store. And it has certainly changed since the last time I was down here. Of course, it's been 30 or 40 years since I was in Dudleyville. But I do want you to look at this store real quick while we're here i'll try to walk around it as quick and as i can because the time on the video camera may be running out but this is the old dudleyville store and uh i have actually been in there it's been many years ago now i came down here there was a lot they were doing a lot of woodwork and that type of stuff whenever i came down here of course you'll see my little car out there and uh here's the side of the store you can get the shot of the old roof Maybe I won't get the sun in it, but anyway, let me let me walk on around. I try to get you a shot of the porch up there. And there's the sign up there on it, uh, uh, Dudleyville Store. And uh, the road actually came in here a little bit different from when I was down here, I believe, from the best I remember. It's been so many years ago, but I did want to bring you down to Dudleyville, and I don't want you to start to go hollering ECW, ECW, because this is not where uh, Big Bubba Ray or Devon or Spike or their brother Big D. This is not where they came from. This is uh, Dudleyville, Alabama that's in Tallapoosa County down here. And uh, here's a couple old signs on the back of the store as you can see. And I'll try to back up to get a little better shot. See if I can get the whole store at the sun this morning. Once again, it's giving me a rough time as it always does. But that'll kind of let you see what the store looks like. And we'll walk right over here so I can get the other side. And as you can see now, in Dudleyville, there's some very nice houses down here. And, of course, we want you to watch out for buried cable if you come down here to dig a hole. And the sinus is giving me a rough time this morning. So, anyway, I just want you to see what remains of the uh, store in Dudleyville. All right, now I have one other little thing right down here that I want to show you. Uh, this this little sign that I just walked by, but I'm going to show you that. I want to tell you right quick while we're walking down here that uh, Dudley Bill was named for Peter Dudley. He uh, started a trading post in this area many, many years ago, and it was the only trading post in this area, I guess, of Chambers and uh, Tallapoose County. Now I'm kind of walking on back around the store, and uh, I noticed this little sign. I'll get you a little quick shot of it. I hope I'm getting it in the uh, viewfinder. As I said, the sun is bright this morning. There's a couple of things I want to tell you about uh, Dudley Bill, and I'm going to walk right over here and show you this. All right, let me get you a shot of this little sign, County Line Baptist Church, and we're going to try to go out and find it in just a minute, and I have a little something I want to tell you about that. Okay, we're fixing to go over to the uh, County Line Baptist Church so I can show you that. One other thing I want to tell you real quick is I just talked to some real nice people down here. They told me a little bit of history about Dudley Bill. And I want you to look at this house. This house right here was built in 1876. And in the bicentennial, it was 100 years old. And it's in excellent shape to be that old, it looks like to me. But anyway, let's uh, head on down to the church. Okay, we've come on down a little east of uh, Dudleyville. And what I want you to look at right now is uh, the County Line Baptist Church. And it is on the National Register of Historic Places. It's right here in Dudleyville, Alabama, Tallapoosa County. And there's a historical marker up there in front of the church. And we're going to go up there and look at it right quick. All righty, here we are up here in front of the church. Let me get a little shot of me because I want a shot of me standing in front of a very famous church like this. So anyway, this is the County Line Baptist Church. And it was organized in 1835. And as I said, it is on the National Register of Historic Places. Let's go over here and look at the uh, historical marker, and I'll try to read it if I can see it. All righty, now let me see if I can read this uh, historical marker for you. It says County Line Baptist Church, and it's in Chambers County, Alabama. We're right on the uh, chambers Tallapoosa County line. Uh, let me see if I can read this now. <clears throat> From 
First building was erected on this two-acre site purchased from Creek Indians and contributed by W.C. Morgan. This building, erected in 1890, has been in continuous use and remains virtually unaltered. Placed on Alabama's Register of Landmarks and Heritage January 14, 1980, and National Register of Historical Places August 19, 1982. It is a member of the Southern Baptist Convention. And I'll do my best to get a good shot of that church. And as I said, I'm going to get over here in front of the camera, maybe get a good picture of, of it behind me. I, whenever we do these Alabama adventures, I like to kind of remember them the best I can. And uh, I'll walk on around the edge here to give you a little bit better close-up shot of the old building. I was told up in Dudleyville just a few minutes ago that uh, the front of it is original. Uh, there uh, have been some Sunday school rooms added on the back uh, recently, but because it is on the National uh, Register of Historical Places, it has to be left as it originally was, and uh, that's it. But that room right back there in the back has been added on uh, Sunday school room. Let's go out here in the cemetery just a minute. The cemetery is right here by the church. Let's walk out here. All righty, we're out here in the uh, Candeline Baptist Church Cemetery. And as you can see, it's a very old cemetery. Of course, there are some new graves I can see in here, but it is very old. One other thing I do want to tell you is about the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. And I know you think you always add something in about Horseshoe Bend on all your videos. Well, that's because Horseshoe Bend played a very important, a very historical part of uh, our history here in uh, Tallapoose County. And I guess as well as Chambers, on up to where I live in uh, Randolph. It had a lot to do with it whenever the uh, Creek Nation was defeated. But anyway... I won't get on the history of Horseshoe Bend yet. I want to do a, uh, another video on that pretty soon. But what I do want to tell you is when they had the battle up there, uh, the first American killed in that battle was Major Lemuel Montgomery. And he is now buried at uh, Horseshoe Bend. But it was kind of an odd story on him. Whenever he died, he'd, he'd done a lot of traveling. He was the only man that was buried at Horseshoe Bend. If you ever go there and you notice there's no burial ground up there. And uh, that's one of the things that I didn't like about uh, Andrew Jackson. He didn't bury his men. He didn't. He certainly didn't bury any of the Indians. But uh, I don't like that about a uh, leader, a uh, general, a military man, a president. People that you have been with for months and months, eating with them, laughing with them, carrying on, going down there, having a war with them protecting you uh, side by side. And you're too sorry to bury the bodies whenever they get killed. I don't have a whole lot of use for Andrew Jackson, and I don't care what anybody says. That's my opinion. That's the bottom line on it. Whether you like it, you like it. If you don't, I don't care about that because I have absolutely no use at all for Andrew Jackson. But now that I'll just quit preaching a minute, what I want to tell you about him, he was buried first at Horseshoe Bend. Later on, the body was exhumed, and he was brought up here to uh, Dudleyville. And I'm not sure if he was buried in this cemetery or some other cemetery in Dudleyville. But he was buried here for a while. Later on, they decided to carry his body back to the original burial site, and that's where they buried him. And we're going to swing by Horseshoe Bend, and I'm going to show you that grave in just a minute. Okay, now just before we leave, I do want to give you one more little shot. There are some extremely old tombs. It's a very nice looking old cemetery, and uh, I was looking to see if there were any names that I might recognize, but I do want you to get another little shot of this old cemetery. Old cemeteries fascinate me. I know I'll be in one pretty soon, and I don't guess I'll be fascinated then, but I do want you to look at very nice monument right there, and I'm going to walk out there and see if that's anybody that we might know. All right, I have walked out here, and I want you to see this. Uh, this is an urn on top of this uh, monument and uh, doing a little uh, cemetery history. An urn represents human remains, and there are human remains below. That's what that represents. There's also what looks like a veil around that urn, symbolizing that the veil between life and death is very thin, and you never know when you're going to pass from one side to the other. I was trying to see what else I can see on this uh, tombstone. The sun is so bright on this white stuff, I can hardly see. I can tell right down at the bottom that there are some uh, leaves and that type of stuff, which uh, leaves and uh, flowers and that type of stuff symbolize uh, growth and life, and that... Uh, this person's soul will live on forever but as you can notice there's also a veil right here there's a veil up here on top of it and a lot of work in that uh, particular tombstone I do like to go around to some of the old cemeteries sometime and look at tombstones there's a lot of artwork a lot of history in uh, cemeteries 
But now let's go on back to Horseshoe Bend and I'll show you the grave site of uh, Major Montgomery, the only man buried at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. All right, we're going on down the road toward uh, Dudleyville Road and I just ran up on something very unusual. I'm gonna turn around and try to get a little video of it. Uh, we're always running up on something paranormal and uh, I think I've run up on something paranormal so I wanna show that to you in just a minute. It's a sign. It's at somebody's house. It uh, says uh, a dreamland. Now where have we heard dreamland? I know that's a radio show sometime, but isn't some of the government facilities somewhere also called dreamland or something similar to that? But yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get a shot of that sign as we go back by. All right, now I'm not just exactly sure where that sign was, so we can always edit it out. But I believe it's right down here. All righty, boys and girls, we made it on down to Horseshoe Bend. I wanted to show you that grave right quick, uh, and I'll show you where it's at. We're here at Tour Stop 3, I believe. I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I didn't check the sign as we came in. But it's the actual battlefield. That, that, that's where it is. Let me show you this. If you see that uh, picket fence line out there, that's where the uh, Creek Indians had a wall constructed of uh, trees they had cut down. Logs is actually what it was that they could fight behind. And uh, right up here is a uh, pavilion that you can uh, stand under get out of the sun or rain or whatever and right here is a little sign that says exhibit and that's what we're going to is the exhibit okay now we're going to continue filming i got a little something i got to tell you real quick that happened i was filming down here yesterday trying to get the uh, complete video done and the memory in the camera filled up so i had to stop and go home and i came back uh, this afternoon to finish i waited till this afternoon so the shadows would kind of be around be a little bit cooler it's uh gets cool at night down here now but it's still hot during the day but anyway one thing that i have got to uh correct a while ago that i said was i thought this was tour stop three actually where we're headed is tour stop number two and let me get a little shot of that sign so you will uh have an idea of what you're looking for if you come down here looking for some of this stuff and uh now i'm going to swing the camera around now that's the actual battlefield of horse you being and uh, we're headed to that little exhibit that I showed you a while ago out there because that's where uh, Major Montgomery's buried. Okay, we're going to try to walk on back out there. Uh, just as I started the phone rang and I had to catch that real quick. But anyway, we're going to walk on out here now. And if we get another phone call, we'll have to pause it one more time. Okay, now right here at tour stop number two, I got it right that time. Right here at the battlefield, there's a little pavilion and there's some uh, historic markers out there and uh we'll walk out there and i'll show those to you all right now we've made it out to the uh pavilion and i want to show you these three markers and i want to tell you a little something that i heard about general montgomery or read about him i mean several years ago so let me just turn the camera around and when you're under this pavilion you will see these three uh, markers that tell you a little bit of something about the battle that day well what it is what they say is uh general montgomery was killed as he uh near the uh, barricade and this would be the barricade right here on this picture and what I wanted to tell you is one of these two soldiers may depict him because what I read many years ago about him was he was actually killed attempting to cross the barricade so as I said one of these two soldiers in this painting may actually represent uh, General Montgomery but I think it's been changed now to he was just killed charging the barricade as a history always gets changed a lot. Doesn't matter what it is, somebody's gonna change it. All right, now we've come out from under the uh, pavilion and we're gonna walk right out here to his grave. That's the uh, grave enclosed in that little uh, fence or whatever you like to call it. You may not can see it yet for the sun. I'm not real sure because the sun is bright. But I do wanna show you this right here first. This was placed here by the daughters of uh, the War of 1812 or something like that. This is a marker that marks Jackson's trace. This actually uh, was put here where Jackson claimed that he actually, and he did come through here, but this is supposed to be the exact route that uh, Jackson took whenever he came down for the Horseshoe Bend campaign, or so it was called. And there is a marker right there, and I would read that marker. This is one of those days that I can't see stuff little, and I can't see that to read it. But anyway, we'll try to get it in another video. But when this, uh, uh, marker was put right here for uh, on Jackson's trace 
it was all one solid piece, but over time, somebody has uh, taken something and broke a corner of it off. I can remember years ago, it was all one solid piece. But anyway, let's walk right out here under this shade tree. Well, there's a lot of shade trees here right now. But this is the grave site of uh, the Lemuel P. Montgomery, who was the first American soldier killed at the Horseshoe Bend, most likely as he was attempting to cross the barricade. Because usually the history that you find that's old, a long time ago in older books, is usually more accurate than uh, the history that you'll read now after somebody rewrites it so it'll sound good their way. Also out here on his grave is a uh, marker that tells a little something about him. And I, as I said, I would read that, but uh, this is one of those days that I can't see how to read. But there's his uh, headstone, uh, the little fence that encloses the grave. Uh, he has actually been buried here twice. And that's why I came out here to show you this. Because as I said earlier, he was actually buried here. Then he was carried over to Dudleyville. In one of the, I think there's two or three cemeteries over in uh, Dudleyville. I'm not sure which one he was buried in, but he was buried there. Then a few years ago, he was uh, exhumed and brought back over here. But I do want to tell you a little something about Major Montgomery. He uh, was a lawyer up in Tennessee, and he joined uh, up with uh, Jackson's Army whenever the uh, massacre at uh, Fort Mims happened, and they came down here to uh, avenge the Red Sticks, uh, revenge or avenge them or whatever you want to call it. And that's whenever the massacre at Fort Mims uh, occurred, then that's when Jackson made the statement, that uh, he swore revenge on uh, the Creek Nation, and certainly at Horseshoe Bend he got it. He uh, slaughtered just about everything that was alive here that day. There was like a, I'll get into that later on a, another video, but I will mention there was like a thousand warriors out here on this battlefield, and I think from what I have read on some papers and stuff, there was one uh, warrior took prisoner. Now, how many uh, women and children he killed, I don't know uh, what, uh, what uh, history says is he took 200 uh, prisoners. So that means he killed a lot of people that day. But uh, anyway, we'll get back to that some other time. I do want to tell you something else about uh, Major Montgomery. Montgomery, Alabama and Montgomery County in Alabama was named in his uh, honor, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, also, Fort Montgomery down near Fort Mims later on was built, and it was named in his honor as well. Of course, Jackson had that done. Jackson, uh, from here, went on down to uh, Wetumpka, which is right next to Montgomery at the intersection of the Tallapoosa and the Coosa River, and that forms the Alabama River. And Montgomery, right down below uh, Wetumpka, where Andrew Jackson built Fort Jackson, and it was also called Fort Toulouse, uh, from what I understand. Uh, that area there is where Montgomery, Alabama is, and I guess it was in honor of this same man that he decided to name that particular area Montgomery. But anyway, that's just a little something I want to tell you. We'll head on back to the studio, and I'll get this video wound on up. And okay, we have come on back to the uh, studio to finish up this particular video on a lot of stuff this afternoon, especially Butston and Dudleyville. And uh, there's a couple other things that I need to tell you about Dudleyville before we go. One of them is a uh, famous person that came from Dudleyville was Abram Mordecai. He's the man that installed the very first cotton gin in the state of Alabama, and he lived in Dudleyville. And one other person that you may be a little bit more familiar with, a famous person from uh, Dudleyville, was uh, Claude Pepper. I know if uh, you're as old as I am, years ago you heard a lot on the news about Senator Claude Pepper. He was a U.S. Senator. He was also a U.S. Representative from Florida, and he was born here in Dudleyville. And as I do these videos, sometimes I leave a little something out and then I remember it. And that's what I've done about uh, Major Montgomery. Uh, you may be tired of hearing about him, but anyway, I do want to uh, tell what I can tell about him because he did give his life in a uh, war. So I feel like uh, we do owe him that anyway, regardless of whether we were on uh, his side or the other side. If you would like to see a statue of a Major Montgomery, and I did not know this until last night, when I found it on the internet, there is a statue of him in Montgomery County at the Montgomery County Courthouse. So if you're down that way and you might uh, be into history and that type of stuff, you might want to run by and see that. I would certainly like to get down there pretty soon to uh, uh, see that myself. Okay, and as we're winding the video on down, I want to run back by Butston real quick and tell you that uh, 
Buston was a place I always enjoyed going. I really liked going down there, especially in the spring or fall when it wasn't real hot, wasn't real cold, uh, to uh, get the parts or whatever I needed down there or to get uh, John Baker or his wife or one of the guys that worked in there to do some work, and uh, sometimes they gave me advice on what I needed to do and everything. Uh, John's wife, I believe, is uh, uh, still alive. Uh, last I heard, I saw her uh, several years ago down at a, uh, a gas station, and uh, I, that was the last time I saw her, but I heard she is uh, still alive. She was a very fascinating person to me. She was uh, the only woman, well, she was a, a young lady back in those days that I knew that uh, could work on cars, and that was very fascinating to me back then. Wish I uh, could relive those times again. But anyway, I also want to thank them for uh, Chico, their dog down there. He was a very smart dog that enjoyed playing ball. And he would play ball and jump as high as you could uh, imagine all day long. And my dog Chico was pretty, much the, was pretty much the same way until he got old. He was a big ball playing dog too. Just a uh, uh, lot of memories that uh, came back down there the other day whenever I went through. A lot of good memories. Now then, a little trip down to Dudleyville turned out to be a lot more than what I thought it was whenever I left that morning when I decided to go. Of course, I carried Chico with me. And uh, we got down there and we met uh, this very nice man and his wife and we talked with them a while. And uh, anyway, they were telling me uh, some history about the store. And uh, I don't know if you can see it on any of the uh, video I did. I really didn't try to make a picture of the sign that well. But at one time, at the last thing that the store down there was used for was uh, Dudleyville Crafts. And they made all kinds of wood crafts. This was back in the uh, 70s when arts and craft shows and that type of stuff was so big. And uh, they, as I did too, uh, went to a lot of art and craft shows. I made a lot of uh, woodworks, that type stuff that I carried to uh, craft shows and country fairs and stuff like that and sold back then also. Anyway, I, after we got to talking about it, I remembered uh, that I did carry my mother down there one time. She uh, was very interested in that type of stuff. She made a lot of quilts and things like that. We went down there to that store just to let her see some of the woodwork and that type of stuff that uh, these people did. Uh, as I said, she uh, really enjoyed it, and I'm real glad I carried her down there now. I remember after we got to talking, me and uh, uh, this couple that I met down there that day, that my mother actually bought a, uh, a windmill down there. Uh, that was one of the main things that uh, Dudleyville Craft was known for was their windmills. And this was a not a real big windmill, but it was a, a pretty good size. And I remember having to dig a hole to put the post in to put it up about the next day when we got home with this thing. But what it was, was a, uh, a Dutch lady uh, churning as the windmill would turn. When the wind would blow and the windmill would turn, this uh, lady would uh, churn like she was churning butter in a mold. And uh, I was real glad that that memory came back. I had uh, pretty much forgotten about that until we got to talking about the windmills that uh, uh, Dudleyville Crafts made down there. And uh, I had a friend of mine that played uh, football over at... Uh, University of Alabama several years ago whenever uh, Bear Bryant was over there and he said that Bear Bryant was big on having the players to call their parents at least once a day. I don't know if he did that all the time or if it was just whenever this one particular player was over there at this one particular time. But he said that Bear Bryant told him <clears throat> several times to always call your parents at least once a day that he wished he could call his. And that is some very good advice if your parents have not passed on yet. Try to call them at least once a day. It would mean a lot to them. I certainly wish I could still call mine. One other little thing that I do want to uh, tell you is about this hat. You've probably seen me wearing this same hat in a uh, few previous videos, but it had a much wider brim. I liked the hat when I bought it. I didn't think the brim was hardly as wide as it was whenever I put it on in the store and bought it. But anyway, I got back home and that thing looked like I had a pizza pan on top of my head. I got in here the other night and took me a pair of scissors and marked this thing off, measured it down. And I trimmed that brim down a little bit to where you can wear it like out in the bushes and out in the woods. You can't wear a real wide brim hat out there. It looks like a hat company would figure that out sometimes. And sometimes you need a hat that hadn't got a, a six foot brim on it. I guess I need to contact the hat company and design them a hat or two. I just wanted to bring that up so you would know uh, that uh, there was a little bit of different look in that hat. I'd also like to say to the fine people that I met in Dudleyville and sat on their front porch, I felt very welcome down there. I really enjoyed that whenever they asked me to come up and sit and talk a while and all the stories that they told me about uh, things that went on in Dudleyville. I wish we could have got to a lot more of those on this video, 
I would just like to say that there are some very friendly people down there. I'm very proud of met y'all. Thank you very much for taking the time to sit down and talk a while while I was uh, putting this video together. And something else I want to show you real quick. While I was in Dudleyville and met uh, this uh, man and his wife down there, they had a original painting that uh, someone had did of the old store building. And they told me who the artist was, and I did not write it down, and I have done forgotten who the particular artist of this particular picture was. But anyway, it is a very good picture of the old store in Dudleyville. It's more of the way that I remember it years ago when I went down there. So I'll let you look at that for just a second. And uh, also, uh, whenever they showed me this, as I was leaving, they had an old dinner bell in the yard. And uh, you don't see these very much anymore. I used to have an old dinner bell similar to this. And I want to show you a picture of it real quick. And uh, anyway, if you get down toward Dudleyville, uh, you might want to check some of these little landmarks out. And I would also like to do this entire video in memory of a very good friend of mine, John Baker, and also to his dog, Chico Baker. Uh, if you ever saw uh, John Baker, you would know that he very much favored uh, uh, Merle Haggard a lot. Uh, they could have pretty much passed for brothers. But anyway, uh, as I said, I would like to do this uh, video in memory of my very good friend, John Baker, and his dog, Chico. And so, I guess now, as we always do, I better say hello to granddaughter Madison. I also want to tell you that the Alabama Bigfoot Society is run completely out of pocket, as well as everything else we do is. And if you're in a position to where you can and where you would like to make a donation so we can keep these things going, just go on our website, alabamabigfootsociety.com. That's all one word, and you'll find a place there on the very front page to where you can make that donation. It would be very much appreciated. If you like what we're doing down here and uh, you like these videos, I hope you give us a like. I hope you subscribe to the channel. And I guess with all that being said, that I'll be looking for you next time on the next Alabama adventure. And Chico and I will see you on down the road. The space between every two trees is like a doorway. A doorway waiting for you for another adventure here in Alabama.